human being in the world deserves clean water. And We Make Impact does this and so much more. Today at DS Media, we are privileged to have the founder, who is Jimmy Cohen. Well, thank you for, uh, for asking that question. You know, I'll start with the beginning. Uh -huh. the, be the beginning, beginning, I literally had a water birth. I don't know if that's at all related, but that happened. Okay. And then my first ever fundraising experience was actually for a school over in Cambodia. It was grade 11. I was studying in uh, Japan. I was in high school. And a group called Hope International gave a presentation. And they said, if a group of 10 to 15 of you which are raised the equivalent of about $700, and you can fund a new classroom, which is really needed over in this town in Cambodia. So I got excited. My friends and I, we got together. I was hustling pizzas because my dad actually runs an Italian food and wine company. I convinced him to literally send a truckload of pizza to the school for free. So yen, in that case, goes directly towards this cause. And people loved it. And I was so excited. I was hustling pizzas at sports games and after school. Made a partnership with the head of the cafeteria to store and prepare the pizza for me. As long as I didn't sell it during lunchtime, that was our agreement. And we ended up raising thousands of dollars. We flew to Cambodia, where we physically built the foundations of the school. So we're passing bags of sand back with the kids. We got to learn from them. You know, a lot of these kids also wanted to help people like me. And while I was going around the area, I learned that there were other kids who weren't even able to go to that school because it's their job to carry water back to their families. And this was heartbreaking for me to experience. And I realized that water changes everything. You know, it, it clearly changes health. It kills thousands of kids every single day. But it also changes opportunities, mm -hmm. right? It changes opportunities to get an education, opportunities to get a job, opportunities to start a business, ultimately opportunities to break out of the poverty cycle that so many people are trapped in. So that's when the seed was planted of, of solving the world's water crisis. And it wasn't until I got to um, you know, to be honest, I was kind of just following my dad's footsteps, and I wasn't really living and taking action, even though I had this realization just how kind of messed up the world is. Mm -hmm. And that was slowly eating away at my soul. I felt like there was so much more that I had to do, and I feel like everyone has some kind of passion and purpose inside of them. And it might be dormant at the time, but if, until you take action, everything changes. So one day I decided I need to change, make a change in my life because I was, I was not feeling good. I was in a, a dark place and my roommate said, hey, come to this student club meeting. Mm -hmm. Come to this club meeting because I was invited by a girl. I don't want to go by myself. I'm like, sure, I'll come with you. Yes, I went there and they gave another presentation. This time they were looking through all these different fundraising methods and strategies that they were doing. And one of those fundraising opportunities was they were actually approached by a downtown nightclub promoter to sell tickets to an event. And all the proceeds were going to fund a well over in Kipson, Kenya. And something inside of me that day just clicked. I felt this insane passion of energy just surge through me. And I, was, I raised my hand. I was like, I need to take a leadership role in this event. And no one knew me except my roommate in that room. But I think just because of my sheer enthusiasm and passion that people felt, they gave me a shot. And they're like, yeah, you can, you can, take a, you can lead this event. And... Um, and we brainstormed ideas, and it was good to, to find the, that water well. Believe it or not, before that moment, I was a lot more in my shell. Um, but I knew that to make that first event a success, I needed to speak with as many people as I possibly could. So that's exactly what I did. I put myself out there. I set up a booth in the most hyper-traffic areas of campus. And I would pitch people, and they wouldn't just say, after some time, yeah, I'll come to your event. They're like, how can I help you? you know? And that's what I think that passion uh, allowed people to, to connect with. And so then the events grew bigger and bigger. We threw a music festival that raised $40,000 for charity. And then over the years, you know, of course, COVID happened, right? Mm -hmm. So with COVID, um, we did a digital event that ended up reaching three and a half million people. But we finally took a step back from the events and from the fundraising. And we thought, we reflected on what's really important. And to me, that's always been the impact. Mm -hmm. And we looked at these charities and... Some of them, they're saying it costs $40 American to give one person access to clean water. But then we looked at the biosand folks, who so knew it would be a tiny fraction of that. And then we looked at, like, okay, we, my brother and I mm -hmm. have raised millions of dollars for charities over the years. Mm -hmm. But then we're like, okay, where are the updates from these donations? Some, there's a lack of transparency there. We're still waiting for some updates today. And so we decided we need to do this ourselves, like actually implement yes, the so projects okay. because... We believed that we could do it in a, a unique way. And we decided that day to have radical transparency. So 
Whenever someone gives to We Make Impact, they receive a personalized video update where they say, Sophia, you know, thank you so much for giving me this call. You know, now my whole family has access to clean water. And we also combine that with entrepreneurial training so that they can, you know, start their own businesses to be sustainable, get more and more people access to clean water, and also tackle the poverty issue. And so we got a one-way ticket to Uganda, you know, despite the pandemic, despite all of the risks and challenges of going to Uganda, we knew there was going to be political turbulence. But we just did it. And I think that it was that, that passion and that, you know, that inspiration from knowing that we can make an impact that allowed us to do that. So how was your journey in Uganda? Ooh, Uganda, it was, a, uh, it was a turbulent time. It was, you know, initially it was, it was great because, you know, people really understood intrinsically just how important water is. Okay. You know, I, uh, I've been trying to convince people in Canada for so many years to care about the water crisis, but unless you actually experience it, okay. you don't fully get it. Um, and so that was good. And we ended up having like four, we ended up going to five actually, we call them impact centers, mm -hmm. where we would train people on how to make a biosand filter, mm -hmm. how to start your own business. Mm -hmm. But, um, but political turbulence set in. We thought it would happen in December, but it actually happened in November. So the opposition, the, the person who's been in power for 35 mm -hmm. years in Uganda, locked up uh, his opposition for um, you know, organizing rallies, and um, and there was you know riots in the streets. I remember one day we were going to deliver a biosand filter to a church, and we were driving there. Someone was holding a sign that said "Free Bobby Wine." Who's the guy who was locked up? We didn't think too much of it, but uh, about 15 minutes later, we're coming back, and the streets had erupted in like people. There was flames as high as the car, tear gas. Just from earshot of where we lived, there were 40 tear gas shots. We heard people getting shot in the streets at random in Kampala, and we're like, all right. Uh, we were anyway planning to come to Kenya, and we were like, I think it's, I think it's time to go to Kenya. So we, we got so out of there. Kenya in the plan, or it came due to, you know, It was always the plan, because I'd, I'd actually been to Kenya to see that Kipsugo water project, right. um, and well, I saw the other projects that We Charity was working on, mm -hmm. and, um, and it was really inspirational, and I knew that, that we'd have to come back here. So. Mm -hmm. When we got here, we um, we got really sick, actually, when we landed. And we're like, God, I hope it's not the vid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't let this be COVID. <laughs> uh, and it wasn't. We got a test, and we're like, okay, it's just a regular cold. Mm -hmm. And we're like, okay, where do we go? I mean, we knew that sand is the main ingredient in the biosand filters. Okay. So we went to the coast because there's an abundance of sand on the coast. Mm -hmm. But once we got to the coast, we realized that there are other problems, such as salt in the water. A lot of even the boreholes are contaminated mm -hmm. with salt. And so then we came up with other solutions, other filtration methods, mm -hmm. such as reverse osmosis, to even eliminate the salt from the water. So who does that for you? Or is it your own invention? Well, we didn't invent uh, the biosyn filter or the reverse osmosis systems. Mm -hmm. But we are working on innovations, because mm -hmm. the reverse osmosis systems require a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. So there are holes that are over a hundred times smaller than a grain of sand, in some cases a thousand times smaller. And you have to push the water through that hollow fiber membrane so that what comes out is just clean, drinkable water, and what's left is all of the salt and the bacteria and viruses. And that pressure takes up a lot of power, which usually is not good for the environment, and it costs a decent amount of money. So now we're coming up with green, unique ways to find natural pressure to push that water through in a more sustainable and cost-effective way. And of course, it's a lot of work, and you cannot do it alone. So, do you have a team helping you? It takes it takes a village to, to make change. Actually, it takes a movement to make a positive change. And so, we now have over 200 people, or the global executive teams of top executives from companies mm -hmm. like Microsoft, SAP. All these people joined that board to kind of share their expertise. Okay. So, the goal is to empower the entrepreneurs with some of the best business knowledge, mm -hmm. so that they can create change in their communities. Um, but yeah, here I made a TikTok video, and uh, and that ended up reaching uh, so many people that we got hundreds of applicants even right here mm -hmm. in Kenya. Actually, people all around the world, 58 countries, Ghana, Jamaica, everyone wanting to come here and volunteer their time to make a positive impact. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of volunteering, you know, mm -hmm. everyone in this organization, including myself, is actually a volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, we have another company called Many Mangoes, which ended up becoming a nonprofit, mm -hmm. and it dedicated all of its proceeds, it generates leads for companies, mm -hmm. to fund our administrative expenses, to fund mm -hmm. where we live, how we travel, um, even some of the, um, the materials to make these big biosand yeah. filters. We're now working on a 4,000 person biosand filter for people wow. by the Sabaki River. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that's also a, a bit of a unique thing whereby if someone gives us a dollar, 100% of that 
goes directly towards the impact that it was intended for. How can someone um, join, you know, be, um, do something out to We Make Impact? What's the process? Yeah, I mean, if you go to wemakeimpact.org, that's O-R-G, mm -hmm. you can donate. There's a big donate button there. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you go to wemakeimpact.org forward slash join hyphen us, mm -hmm. then you could actually apply to be a part of our team and, and make a change. Yeah. So for instance, um, I want to join Make Impact, I say, um, 100 kilometers from here. So can you provide transport for that, you know, person to come here and join the team, things like that? I mean, it could be possible. Everyone who came here, some even traveled very long distance from okay. the other parts of Kenya. Okay. So we say that once you come here, mm -hmm all of your transport relating to the projects is covered, but it's up to people to come and fly. Because some people fly from Jamaica, right? We can't fly them over it. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone can make equal rules, but, yeah. um, but once you come here, everything's taken care of. Okay. Yeah. And um, being the founder, who else helps you out? Or are you the only person? And then I'm actually the co-founder. So okay. my brother, Isaac Cohen, co-founded this with me. Mm -hmm. um, so my brother actually um, lived in a different country to me for 13 years. Um, yeah, so when, we were both living in Japan, he went back to Australia, I went to study in Canada, then he moved all around the world and he was running a remote business. Mm -hmm. And so 13 years we were separated by geography, and he happened to be on the east coast of Canada, I was on the west coast of Canada, when all the lockdowns happened. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't physically change countries anymore. Yeah. And, uh, and he's like, hey, my brother's on this other side, I'm, I'll go visit him, you know, that you need a reason to travel, and visiting family was actually one of those mm -hmm. designated reasons. Mm -hmm. And so he came to the West Coast, and we threw this digital charity event that I told you reached three and a half million people. Yeah. And it turns out we worked pretty well together. So uh, from that moment forward, we um, we started building things together. I've been working on his company, Mini Mangoes. He's been working on We Make Impact. Together, we're trying to uh, to co-create a world where everyone has access to clean water and no one's living in poverty. All right. So when someone hears We Make Impact, what should it bring in the head? So there's a reason we put the word we in there, right? I want people to feel a part of it in some way. And I fundamentally believe that everyone can make a positive impact. That's why we started something called the Impact Challenge, whereby we nominate three people to make any small deed in their community, right? We gave out, you know, reusable water bottles filled with reverse osmosis water. We gave out like a dozen of those around here on World Water Day. Um, this is a small act. We, we didn't want to do a huge act because we want to inspire people that they can do small things that you know, when millions of people do those, it actually adds up to a really big difference, you know, we all do what we can. So when people hear We Make Impact, I want people to feel like they're a part of it. They're a part of that we making an impact. Mm -hmm. And I want people to really know that they can um, use their own talents, their own um, unique skill sets yeah. to, to make some kind of difference in the world. And if everyone did that, mm -hmm. we would live in some utopia. Right. So. so do you train specific people because you cannot walk, you know, to each and every part of the world? Yes, so, yes. So actually, um, COVID has been some form of a silver lining because okay. before we were just going to all these high schools and remote villages around the coast here to teach people about biosand filtration okay. and entrepreneurship and sales. But because of COVID, all the schools basically closed down except for exams. So we weren't able to go and teach in high schools anymore. Okay. So what we did is we, we recorded, we did virtual trainings for teachers who applied yes. to be teachers yeah. in all these different countries around the world. Ghana, Jamaica, even people applied in Congo, wanting to, you know, people have been telling me, hey, come to Congo, come to Pakistan, we need your help. But, yeah. but Congo's a pretty turbulent place as well, and you know, we, we want to go to all these places down the line, but, you know, it, it's, we really want to replicate ourselves. And so by training these teachers, mm -hmm. who are now going to train other teachers, yeah. We're able to expand all across the globe mm -hmm. from right here in Melinda, Kenya. So, so the beauty of the biosand filter, which by the way was invented in 1993, the same year that I was born, is that it's made of entirely local materials. Materials you can find in practically any village. So it's mostly made of sand. Right, you need very fine sand, then you need small gravel and then large gravel. Okay, and this is inside a, either a plastic or cement container. Now, there's also a diffuser so that the water comes, comes down slowly, slowly, pole pole, so that it doesn't disturb what's called a bio layer. So, on the top of the sand, 
forms a biological layer. Now this is a living organism. It's made of bacteria, so you have to use the same water source so that this, the bacteria that's lived from that water source is forming on the top and it starts to live at the top of the sand. And it basically goes to eat the other bacteria that comes in. Up to 99% of all that bacteria is eliminated coming through that top layer of the bio layer of this biosand filter. So sand filtration has been happening for thousands of years, right? But biosand was invented in 1993. And now we are trying to make this solution not only known, but widespread and adopted all across the world because it is the most cost-effective water solution currently in existence. So any closing remarks you know, to the people out there, people who are listening to you, and um, what, what can you tell them? Hmm. What I can tell you mm. is there is some form of passion, an unstoppable force inside of you. And you might not feel that force right now, but it's in there. It's, it could be dormant like a volcano ready to erupt. And it's only until you try new things as I did. I tried many, many things before I discovered what my passion is. And also reflect internally on what sort of pains have you experienced? What sort of problems have you encountered? And once you realize these deep pains that you've experienced, you can then go to solve those pains for other people. So I really encourage you to A, try new things, and B, reflect on what sorts of challenges you've been through in your life, because you can become very passionate about solving those problems and challenges for other people. So uh, that's the message to you. And if anyone wants to get involved in We Make Impact, you've heard how to do that. WeMakeImpact.org forward slash join hyphen us. Um, we are starting a movement here. Um, everyone in this world can make a positive impact. Thank you for watching. My name is Erica and uh, I joined the Women Impact about a month ago and uh, the reason why I came to volunteer is because I found an opportunity to help others so I had to and I said why not and uh, I'd like to invite anyone out there who wants to come and help come on over and join us. Hi guys my name is Onyebuchi Victor Kebu I'm from Nigeria I joined Women Impact in December last year 2020 and I've been a very strong member of We Make Impact. I'm in charge of local projects and I'm leading the building team that is constructing the big bass and filter for the people living in Sabati River. I joined We Make Impact because I understand that the best way to eradicate poverty in Africa is through scale acquisition and that is what we are all about. Providing clean drinking water for the people all over Africa and also teaching them how to start their own business. So I challenge every one of us, anywhere, no matter what you're doing, to make an impact and help make Africa a better place. Hi everyone, welcome back to Bonjour. DS Media. We are at the Baki River, where Jimmy and his team are going to have the biggest, biggest filtration. Jimmy, tell us more. So on this side, you can see people collecting water. Um, we're building a large-scale biosand filter. And we're bringing large amounts of sand, small gravel, and large gravel to this location so that everyone can filter their water and have maji safi. But um, we're first starting with pickaxes and shovels. We're building a huge water tank that is underground for the most cost-effective and also sustainable method. That's what we've come here to do. The challenges here at Sabaki are devastating. You can see that the people are digging, using their own hands to get at least some clean water. So we make impact is trying their best to build the largest biosand filter to help these people have clean water. And this river also has hippos, making it a threat to the people living in this area. <laughs> Nataka msaba maji safi. Maji haya yakisema yametuchokesha. Tunataka maji safi yani yakuje mpaka hapo nyumbani kwa sababu maji haya tunachimba na mikono, tunatumia kikombe. Lakini kuinama ni shida. Lakini tunaomba serikali mtusaidie na maji safi. Sisi ni wakazi wa Burundi tuko pamoja na sabaki. 
So right here, up here at the top of the hill is where we're building the big biosand filter because right where we're standing, the water will rise quite a lot to flood all of this. That's why we kind of have it right next to the river. But over here, you can see that people are digging with their hands. The reason for that is that the water passes through the sand uh, to get in. And this is basic sand filtration. Although it gets rid of the sediment, it doesn't get rid of all the viruses and the bacteria, which our biosand filter will be eliminating. Hi, my name is Harman Guerrero. Today we're here at Sabaki River. We've started construction for the biosand filter. Um, my position in the organization is the head of, head of operations for Kenya for We Make Impact. I'm also the legal consultant for the team and I guide them on how to engage um, the Kenyan operations. Join me when I came back to apply my skills in a positive way, give back to the community. I found Jimmy through social media, which he's really good at. been enjoying learning a lot from him as well. And I get along very well with the team. So we're doing a fantastic uh, project in Kenya. We're trying to provide clean drinking water all across Kenya in dry areas. Um, we are still looking for volunteers, so if you're interested in joining, go to wemakeimpact.org and apply. We're welcoming everyone and we look forward to many signups. Today we are so grateful. We're so grateful for all of the people who contributed online to wemakeimpact.org to make this a possibility. You know, as we were walking in here, we saw people drinking directly from the Sabaki River. We know that this has one of the highest cases of Dilhousie and other water-related illnesses. Um, and then these kids have left playing soccer, the fun game on the soccer field, to come here and volunteer their time to help build. This has been months in planning, and we're so excited to finally get going. Let's make some impact. Let's do this. I'm going to jump in here. All right. Can I kick over? All right. Let me take over here. All right. This is good. So this is the point where we make impact is building the largest biosand filter. Stay tuned at DS Media as we bring you the whole journey of this. For DS Media, I am Sophia Rukwaro.